Usually, before activating the equipment and coming on the air, I sit in front of this microphone with nothing in front of me but the control board, no script. And having done 5,000 plus of this particular format, with probably 10,000 times hearing this theme music, with thousands upon thousands of program titles all different, I think to myself, well, here we go again. What can I say that would be different or impressive or distinctive? Well, once again, I welcome you to the program Night Sounds. And it occurred to me, Bill, the best thing you could do at this point is keep it simple. I mean, how many of you are ready for deep theological or philosophical thought at this time of the night? Some years ago, I made an album of trombone music. I guess I've done probably a dozen albums of this type through the years. And in this particular group of recorded songs, I selected one, an old hymn called What Wondrous Love Is This? I decided to use the trombone and in some way simulate the sound of a French horn. And I recall this necessitated a straight tone with every note being right on target where you hit the note and expand it just a little bit and bring it back before you go into the next note. Because the trombone has a slide it has a distinctive sound, so I couldn't have the slide sound of smearing a note. It had to be exact. Uh, sort of like pushing a valve down, which the French horn does. So the intervals are exact. All of this in mind, I found out that when I finally pulled this off, they had a $20,000 multiple track recording machine that was putting this down on tape. And the engineer said later, you know, that was really taxing to this machine. It called forth all of its capabilities because you had a straight tone. Usually, most instrumentalists have a vibrato of sorts. And we noticed just a slight quiver or tremor in the sound emitted by the machine. And I said, I had no tremor in my tone. It was straight as a board. He said, well, obviously this machine has a flaw in it. We'll have to go back and re-record it. So what occurred to me at that moment was, as sophisticated and expensive as that machine was, it could not record an authentic straight tone, such as a piano, because you'd have a slight flutter in the tone. Well, beside that, here I was, trying to simulate the French horn and be exact, almost like walking on eggs. And once again, it occurred to me that simplicity is not always that simple. The most difficult solo I have ever played has been the simulation of a French horn. An old hymn tune called Heifredol, Welsh background and origin, but at this point, we're going to just play a slower song, again simulating the sound of the French horn on the trombone, and this launches us into a program which I've subtitled Keep It Simple. So we selected a recorder, a 12th century instrument, sounding like a flute. This in itself is not an easy instrument to play. Then we had an acoustic guitar, come in a moment later than the trombone enters. All of this sounds so simple, yet again it was like walking on eggs as far as executing each tone and each note, making sure the pitch was there, the intonation was exact.
One of the older hymns we don't hear much anymore. What wondrous love is this, O my soul, featuring recorder, acoustic guitar, and solo trombone. This is Night Sounds. I'm Bill Pierce, and the subtitle of our time together tonight is Keep It Simple. I'm glad that Jesus kept things simple when he talked to ordinary people like you and me. He usually related accounts to them via parables or stories. He had a lot of children in his audiences. In fact, one of the most simply profound sermons ever preached would be called the Beatitudes. Let's read it again. And as we hear these words, see if you can discover in your own experience and mindset and observation as you look at people and events going on around you today, whether there's an equation or a similarity. Chapter 5 of St. Matthew. Now when he saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. That's the extent of the reading from Matthew 5. Once again, Jesus, in his beautifully simple words, settling on true center. When we picture Jesus... How do you see him? Most of the time an artist would portray him in the flowing robes or the dress of that day, perhaps the hairstyle, and romanticize him somewhat. But could you see him in blue jeans today, walking the streets of your city, with twelve people dressed in their grubbies? That's probably more authentic and valid than the way we see him pictured. I like to visualize him as a shepherd on a Judean hillside, talking to sheep herders and ordinary blue-collar workers and anyone who would listen. Let's think right now of the shepherd. As Patty White sings for us, and takes us back to simplicity. Patiently he watches me and oversees my way, attending me unendingly. The shepherd is always right beside he gently guides to green and cooling shade. He bids me come and follow him wherever he may be. The shepherd is 
again singing about the shepherd of the sheep, the figure of Jesus, in gentleness, meekness, but by no means passive. Sometimes we equate meekness with passivity, which certainly is far from the truth. A gentle man can be one of great strength. Tonight's program Keep it simple. That's our title. Thinking of Jesus' disciples, when he sent them out on a mission, he told them, Take no gold, nor silver, nor copper in your belts, no bag for your journey, not two tunics, don't take sandals or a staff, for the laborer deserves his food. These words in Matthew 10 So his advice, as his inner circle of fellowship, his workers, his disciples were leaving on that preaching mission, was to travel light, keep it simple. He knew that a great many possessions would be like a weight to slow them down. Any of you who travel a lot will learn in time to travel light. took me years before I learned this, and of course... As the high-tech age invaded our lives, the old vinyl discs which we used to carry around in heavy boxes turned into cassettes and now CDs and things are getting better and lighter and simpler. Maybe taking every kind of provision would take away the disciples' trust in God. And Jesus knew that we can easily be imprisoned by the things we own and carry around with us. And what we possess then possesses us. So traveling light and keeping it simple is very timely good counsel for all of us tonight. As we think of simplicity in these moments, 
We're going to do an antithesis in our mind, sort of flipping over to a busy life, one that's hectic and chaotic, perhaps. And the poetess entitled her work Full Schedule. She wrote, I'm wrestling with today. It's so very much with me, pressing, crowding, fencing me in. I cry for elbow room. In frustration, I fret over routines and necessities that squeeze and choke me, eliminating my choices. Duties shackle me to the clock, and my freedom is stifled. Chafing under limitation, I grope for meaning in this restriction. Lord God, come into my today. I seem to drift away, unaware of your presence. Clear the dimness of my eyes to see that you are in my day. This is the day that you have made and appointed for me, foreordained specifically that I should walk through its hours without anxiety. Displace my agitation with your peace. Permeate every hour with your presence, so that my obligations might become blessings. Lord, I accept your day, not passively nor fretfully, but embrace it joyfully just as it is, fully scheduled, come what may, committed to you for my good and your glory. So, Lord, have it your way. A day can be full, and it can be busy, but it doesn't have to bend you out of shape or tear you up. There is a way to pace a busy day and keep it simple, and it starts from within. When Jesus said, Peace, I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world system gives. Let not your hearts be troubled. Hostility and anxiety and conflict begin with a troubled heart and spirit. That's why he got right to the heart of the matter. And he pinpointed it by saying, Your hearts are troubled. Let them not be such. You believe in God? Believe also in me. Come to me, all of you who work so hard and are heavy laden with so many things, and I will give you rest, which does not mean laziness or passivity, but keeping it simple and effective and efficient. Sometimes we have so much verbiage when we're trying to talk about a certain matter that it gets complex. I've run into that sometimes, searching for adjectives and more impressive ways to say things. But when it comes right down to bedrock, simplicity is the order of the moment. That's why Don Francisco recorded this particular song some time ago when he said, There are no words to say how I feel about you. There are no words to tell
Francisco singing on night sounds, there are no words. So, Lord, I give my heart. What better way to start? Tonight's program, Keep It Simple. Interesting how we have such a, an ability to make things complex, when simplicity would be so much more effective. Keeping it simple can be keeping it profound. Have a livable lifestyle. Don't compete with your neighbors. Don't get in debt beyond your ability to pay it back comfortably. Share with others. Don't be exclusivists. Be content with what God has given you, because he knows how much you can handle. One man of God said, It's helped me to pray this prayer. Lord, Keep falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give only my daily bread. Otherwise, I may have too much and disown you and say, Who is the Lord? These words from Proverbs chapter 30 in the Bible. So King Solomon knew the danger of having too much money, too much of everything. But like so many others, he failed to follow his own advice. So the illustration from the book Windows reveals the worthlessness of material possessions if our hearts are not right with God. The 82-page inventory of Elvis Presley's estate, totaling $10 million dollars, included a complete inventory of his mansion, Graceland. The house was filled with statues of tigers, lions, elephants, dogs, birds, whales, eagles, a Venus de Milo statue complete with electric waterfall. For transportation, he had two Stutz Black Hawks, valued at $100,000 each, a Ferrari, a Cadillac, International Harvester Scout, a Jeep, Ford Bronco, custom-built Chevy pickup, 18 TV sets, trophy room decorated with army discharge papers, 41 plaques, 32 photo albums of his films, 30 script albums. His musical instruments included seven guitars, one of which his name was inlaid in Mother of Pearl. And not just for him, but for any of us who center on things and want more which would make our lives more complex, we say, keep it simple. Remembering the words of St. Mark, chapter 8, For what shall it profit a person if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? So tonight, as you put your head on the pillow or go out to your job or wherever it is you have to go, in God's divine providence, ask him to help you to keep it simple. For Jesus took a little child, as you recall, and he pointed to him and said to the adults, Except as you become as this little child, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Nothing like the simplicity of a child. Childlikeness, not childishness. Thank you so much for sharing these moments with me tonight. If we can help you beyond the program by sending a catalog of our music, the stress area tapes on depression, loneliness, grief. Our mailing address remains Night Sounds, Wheaton, Illinois, 60189. So may the presence of our God go with you through the night and into tomorrow. And may you realize a simplistic lifestyle one filled with purpose and love and effectiveness. Until we meet again, a peaceful good night.